folks, how are you doing? This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce right here for the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast. Go to the Wayne S. com and get more information there as well as how you can donate to the show or be a sponsor. And I encourage you to get your emergency food supply as much as you want, really, because it's going to help you out. It's going to help out Free America Radio Network. So I continue to bring you the shows because you support the network. Yes, it takes a while to put these shows together. So uh, I got some other projects coming up. The Free America Radio Network is moving to the next level, and you can be a part of that. So your contributions, your donations to the network are very much appreciated, and it'll help the network get to the next level level looking at looking at a lot of stuff to do and it's probably not going to be until next year i can actually get this stuff going and uh, again you can be a part of that so contribute to free america radio network or to the wayne s pierce show by going to the wayne s pierce show dot weebly dot com And, of course, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, even if you disagree with me, go ahead and email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Onward and upward. This is, what day is this? 16th of October, 2014. It's Thursday. And... um, Lots of things happening, lots of things uh, going on. Uh, I just read a headline about Shepard Smith over at Fox News saying nothing to worry about. Don't uh, get your uh, don't get all afraid of everything because you know it's pretty much you know just keep doing what you're doing. Don't believe the hype of the uh, of the uh, state-run media. Uh, but that was Fox News. Uh, it says right here, I'll put this on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page for you to take a gander at because it's an interesting read. And Shepard Smith says, uh, everything is wonderful and you have nothing to worry about. Says not to listen to the, to the hysterical voices that there is no outbreak of Ebola in America and we have nothing to worry about. Really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> uh, I'm not saying that there isn't uh, Ebola or some type of viral bacterial infection going on. I'm not going to say that there isn't. I'm just going to say that people have to pay attention and really, really pay attention to what's going on. And, um, and uh, you know, draw their own conclusions on those things that they see. I, I, don't, I don't really think that... Uh, I don't think people really understand the ramifications of this. And, and uh, hey, I admit, I don't either. I, I, I don't know the whole, you know, aspect of this. I hear people say that it's a manufactured bioweapon, which um, do I have the documents to prove to myself that it is? No, but the evidence is leading into that direction because of, you know, everything else going on behind it. Um so I don't know. I mean, we can go from there and speculate as much as we want, but unless you have the evidence staring you in the face, you don't know anything. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, so we have that going on. We have uh, apparently uh, the the person taking up the suit in the White House is off playing another golf game. Maybe. That's what I hear, but this morning I heard that he's going to forego all sorts of, you know, meetings and and all of that to concentrate on what's going on with the CDC. Uh, The CDC run by military, so let's not get away from that. And if it's not, please show me. Prove yourself right, actually, and show me why it isn't the head of the CDC uh, or the person running it is being told by the military 
Uh, so again, we can speculate as much as we want, but unless we have the evidence in front of us, we don't know. That's just the way it is. So anybody criticizing me for something they don't understand, ask yourself, do you have the proof? No, you don't. You're listening to everybody else. So, And I fully admit right now, I don't have anything in front of me to really, you know, uh, 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 tell you exactly what's going on. All I have is I'm reading other stories, I'm reading other articles, I'm reading headlines, and I'm bringing you my opinion of it. Do I have information? I don't know. And actually, what information, pardon me, what information is there that is going to, you know, show you the truth, show you the facts? Anytime that you hear somebody on the state-run media or whatever, all they're doing is reading off a teleprompter. All they're doing is, is reading an article that someone else wrote or pieces of an article that somebody else wrote or giving you a reference of Associated Press or New York Times or whatever. And guess what? That's what I do. Now, am I right? Am I wrong? Are you right or wrong? I don't know. If you look at me and say that I'm wrong, it's your perspective. Because... I know I'm not wrong because I'm looking at the same information you're looking at. And if you're drawing something out of that, you know, other than what I'm seeing, then are you wrong? Not necessarily. We both may have overlooked something. And that's what I'm trying to do by tearing away the curtain and showing you who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. I'm trying to get behind the story to find out what I overlooked. If I did overlook anything, I mean, it's pretty simple. But anyway, hey, enough about that. I'm ranting and running off on a tangent. So the thing is, is that there's a lot of information out there. And we have to sift through it and we have to ask ourselves the tough questions. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But we have to be honest with ourselves too, don't we? So that's something to think about. Um, this article... About Shepard Smith, this is on therightscoop.com, and it says, Shepard Smith says not to listen to the hysterical voices that there is no outbreak or Ebola in America and that we have nothing to worry about. He also adds that no one is lying to us from the CDC or federal government, which I think is a bit of a billow or who says the CDC has been misleading us. I think everyone, this uh, article was written by... I mean, oh, well, it was by one of the staff writers at therightscoop.com. Uh, and it goes on to say, the writer here says, I think that everyone agrees that there is no outbreak of Ebola in America. But I think that what people are worried about is the fact that we are still accepting people from nations that are being crippled by the disease, which just doesn't make any sense. So while we may be fine now, what's to say that we'll still... That will still be the case in a week or a month or when common sense policies aren't being enforced. And we also can't f forget the southern border is wide open, which is like asking for Ebola patients to just come, come on across. I know it's a much more difficult way to get into the country if you are infected with Ebola, but I'm not so sure it can't be done. So if I agree that we are okay for the moment, it says here, so I agree that if we are okay for the moment, but I'm not so sure for the future. So I agree that we are okay for the moment, but I'm not sure for the future. And I agree with the right scoop writer, the blogger, the blogger extraordinaire since 2009 and the owner of chief blogging office of the most wonderful and super fantastic blog in the known and unknown universe, the right scoop. That's what they say right below the article. I want to believe that we are okay. Now, the Huffington Post says almost the same thing. And Adam Goldberg over there 
in the Huffington Post, as soon as this page does what it's supposed to be doing. Um, For the next few minutes, I'm going to give you the facts on the bulk. Now, I hate this. It's going by itself. So let's just turn the page off and go elsewhere. But anyway, yeah, the, the I don't know. I'll share this one too from the Huffington Post on the Wayne S. Pierce Show uh, Facebook page. I put the other other one up on uh, Free America Radio Facebook page. I'm not going to say that there isn't a pandemic waiting to happen. I'm not going to say that because any disease that people have, any, any illness, any, anything that people have, then they come to this country, it's going to spread. But is it going to spread in a little tiny area and then die out with, you know, doctors being there and everything and the medical technology that we have? Is it going to not be an epidemic across the United States? I can't say that either because I don't know. What I know is what I see. And what I see, I try to get as much information as I can to share it with you. So, for those that want to say that I'm wrong or whatever, well, okay, bring forth the right information. Bring forth the information that you believe is absolutely, positively, 100% factual. You can't do it because there isn't any. One person at the CDC can say one thing, and then the uh, director says something else, and then some lobbyist or special interest group says something else, and then you know you've, you've got 10 people saying 10 different things, and no one really knows the truth, and therefore... You don't have the facts. So when you, and I've seen information pertaining to the patent for the Ebola virus. And then I've seen also the patent for, or a, an article about the patent for the cure. Now, What's that tell you? What's that tell you? I mean, it, uh, to me, that tells me that somebody manufactured it and then turns around and comes up with a solution. Going on to some other area, specifically Texas, specifically Houston, the GOPUSA.com, Fred Jackson over there writes um, from One News Now, Writes, uh, Houston's lesbian mayor changing tune on pastor's sermon subpoenas. Well, yeah, right. The Houston Chronicle is reporting that the city's lesbian mayor, Anise Parker, and her city attorney, David Feldman, are changing their tune on subpoenas the city issued against five city pastors opposed to uh, Houston's equal rights ordinance. The proposed bathroom bill ordinance passed 11 to 6 in May despite vocal opposition by the Houston community, which was led by local churches and their pastors. Among other things, it would give men who say they feel like women, let me, let me read this correctly, among other things, it would give men who say they feel like women the right to use female washrooms and vice versa. I don't even know why they put that in the article. It doesn't make any sense. The Christian legal group Alliance Defending Freedom says the city issued the subpoenas in defense of a lawsuit against the ordinance. The subpoenas demand that the five pastors turn over sermons, uh, sermon notes and private communications with church members. On Tuesday, Mayor Parker and Feldman said the sermons were fair game, but yesterday they admitted the subpoenas were overly broad. That's in quotes. Feldman also said the city will be clarifying their request. Let me interject this right now. The reason why the attorney said that is because he knows it violates the Constitution of the, uh, for the United States of America. 
He knows that it's unconstitutional for the mayor to do what she's doing. So they have to reword it so it won't be so, you know, uh, blatantly obvious that the city wants to implement fascist dictatorial powers. Continuing, the change in stance came after Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott sent a letter to the city officials urging them to withdraw the subpoena. Uh, The Houston Chronicle quotes Abbott's letter as saying, in good faith, this is, quote, in good faith, I hope you merely failed to anticipate how inappropriately aggressive your lawyers would be. Many, however, believe your actions reflect the city's gov- the city government's hostility to religious beliefs that do not align with city policies, unquote. And the complete letter uh, is there. There's a link to it, to the uh, Chronicle story. Another source quotes Abbott's letter as also saying, quote, whether you intend it or not, uh, whether you intend it to be so or not, your actions is your action is a direct assault on the religious liberty guaranteed by the First Amendment. The people of Houston and the religious leaders must be absolutely secure in their knowledge that the religious affairs are beyond the reach of government, unquote. American Family Radio talk show host Sandy Rios announced Thursday morning on her show that a rally was planned for this morning at the First Baptist Church in Houston in defense of the pastors and their First Amendment rights. Among the scheduled speakers is United States Senator Ted Cruz, she said. Well, first of all, Ted Cruz needs to go in there and fire this mayor. Okay? Just simply fire this mayor. You cannot do that. Now they're backtracking. They got their hand caught in a cookie jar. This is weird. I'm trying to share this particular uh, thing on there. Let me go here. GOP. I mean, GOPUSA.com. I'm trying to share the link I see on Facebook, and it's not going. So, I don't know why. So anyway, let me just share the GOP USA link on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. There are several things that you have to look at. First of all, constitutionality of this government. By the way, Washington, D.C., and several governors and several mayors, obviously, and all that, really don't give a crap about the Constitution for the United States of America. They they really, really don't. They, They can care less. They'll tell you to your face, oh, yeah, I care. But they really don't. They really don't. They probably never have. They just... You know, they just sound good in their campaigns and then they get elected and do whatever they want. So anyway, let's move on to uh, to some other some other articles. Let's go to Reuters, shall we? Reuters dot com. Strong economic data cl- uh, calms Wall Street energy stocks bounce. That's that's always good. Uh, Brazil's Nevis closing campaign cash gap thanks to banks and ethanol. Uh, new UN rights boss says in talks with China on Tibet visit. So all these things are happening behind the scenes and not really getting reported. Under the technology uh, section of Reuters, Google tests high-speed wireless service. So now Google is going to be getting into the Internet service provider business, and they've pretty much dominated the uh, browser business. They've got OS uh, operating systems on, you know, the Chromebook. They they have that. Now they're getting uh, into ISP. Yeah, Eric Schmidt must be proud that uh, 
his Bilderberg bosses told him to do this. Goldman, uh, Goldman's focus, Goldman Sachs, Goldman's focus on bond trading pays off as profit soars. Uh huh. Now, <clears throat> I don't know. Let's go to the. Um, let's go to the uh, world section, and on Reuters and uh, hit the U.S. U.S. nurse with Ebola moving hospitals officials grilled. U.S. nurse with Ebola moving hospitals. In other words, leaving the one that she was in, going someplace else. U.S. Transportation Secretary Chief to retire, Homeland Security. Man threatening to jump off New York building, shuts down street. Is that really news? That's out of New York. Out of Little Rock, more than 30 hurt, 5 critical in Arkansas train crash. That's bad. And get this, Ohio 19-year-old gets death penalty for killing a teen. Yeah. Man arrested, this is from Seattle, Washington, man arrested after shooting police targets in three Washington state cities. From Detroit, major settlement puts Detroit closer to bankruptcy exit. And from Washington, White House declines comment on stock market, but notes economic weakness abroad. And, of course, exclusive U.S. farmers seen cutting fertilizer use as crops, crop prices slide. A lot of things going on, folks. A lot of things going on. I will put this link up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page and you can take a gander at that as well. <clears throat> so, let's go to Drudge. Drudge is always a good place to go. DrudgeReport.com Africa, border closures saved us. The U.S. is not doing that. They're not closing borders. They're not stopping flights. At least I haven't heard the uh, CDC talk this morning, so I don't know. But uh, they need to close the borders. They need to stop the flights, period. End of sentence, done. That's it. Close them. Done. Okay? Now, I don't know. I'm just looking here. Sorry. I uh, Now, get this. Everybody loves the Internet, right? New York Times is reporting from David uh, Streitfeld. Airbnb, which is a uh, home rental uh, service. Li uh, Airbnb listings mostly illegal New York State contends. Well, let's read the article by David Streitfeld. Uh from yesterday. Airbnb, the pioneering home rental service, presents itself as a useful, virtuous, and virtuous, excuse me, but uh, the reality is far less benign, according to a report that Eric T. Schneiderman of New York, uh, the New York Attorney General, released on Thursday. The report will say nearly three quarters of all Airbnb rentals in the city are illegal, violating zoning and other laws. Commercial properties or commercial operators, not hard luck residents, supply more than a third of the units and generate more than a third of the revenue. At least a handful of landlords are running what amounts to illegal hostels. Interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. That's out of New York, by the way. Property owners on Airbnb are indeed making money, but it is not being spread around. Most rentals are in three high-profile Manhattan neighborhoods. Queens, Bronx, and Staten Island barely figure. Airbnb declined to aggressively dispute the numbers in the report, which draws on four years of data it provided to the Attorney General after a court fight. Quote, 
We need to move forward, unquote, and Airbnb spokesman Nick Pappas said, quote, we need to work together on some sensible rules that stop bad actors and protect regular people who simply want to share the home in which they live, unquote. I'll put this one up on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. So what do you think? Yeah, I know. What do you think? The um, you know, if you're gonna rent a room out of your out of your house, why not? Why not? I'm just saying. Okay. Anyway. Now. <clears throat> Sorry for the silence. I'm just trying to get to a story here. When I come back from the break at the bottom of the hour, I want to uh, get into some uh, other things as well. Uh, Talk about the border crisis. Uh, It's wide open. There is no crisis. It's just wide open. I mean, you know, they're letting everybody in, and it doesn't really matter. Does it? Well, if it matters to you and it matters to the freedom and liberty that you so cherish, then I suggest that you people get your asses down to the southern border and close it. Tell the Border Patrol you got two choices. Either help us close it or get the hell out of the way so we can close it. And if the Mexican government doesn't like like it, screw them. Tell President Pina Nieto... Kiss my ass. This is America. We don't let your people in. You, you won't let our people in there. Just come right over the border and do whatever, huh? You're not going to put us on your system, are you? No. Then shut up. Close the damn border. Period. I even said this on a previous broadcast and several podcasts. We need to put 100,000 National Guard troops down there. Along with the states that are on the border, need to supply the uh, militias in those states. That's what you need to do. Okay? Now, I have one question before we go to break. I understand that people want to come to the United States for a better life. I understand that. But this country has gone into total tyranny. It is one step away from communism. And my question to you people out there in America that want this country to be the United States that we so enjoy and love, what the hell are you doing to stop it? What are you doing to stop these people from coming over here and destroying this nation? What are you doing? Well, they're not bad. What are you doing? As far as I know, you're doing absolutely nothing. I don't hear news of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of citizens of the United States down at the southern border to close it. I don't hear that on the news. I don't see that on Yahoo or Drudge. I don't, I don't, I don't see it because you people don't have the balls to do it. You don't have the guts to do it. You don't care to do it. You just, hey, come on over. What? You're sick? Ah, just go to the doctor, get it fixed. Can you say complacency? The more complacent you are, the more apathetic you'll be, and you'll just say, ah, screw it, who cares? Questions, comments, concerns, even if you disagree with me, you can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. That's freeamericaradio at usa.com. And if you are listening to me on the website, awesome. The website is thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com. You can check out the site and donate if you like, if you like the show. If you don't, well, then don't donate. That's as simple as that. Um, If you want to advertise on the show, you can. Go to the sponsors page, check that out. Not going to break your advertising budget. I take that into consideration. Email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. 
Listen to Angel Clark Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Radio Freedom News Network. Radio Freedom. US. Hey there, I'm Big Tiny, and I'm the host of Big Tiny's Always and More. And we're playing music that you just love to hear from the 50s to the 90s. So check us out Monday through Friday and see what we're playing right here on Springer.com. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Ah, damn politicians. My mother always told me this country would be screwed if the liberals had their way. The only sanity I get is when I listen to Jeff Wagner on the conservative voice. Only on the conservative radio network. This is Wayne S. Pierce from the Free America Radio Network, and we are looking for sponsors. If you want to sponsor any of the shows on the Free America Radio Network, email us at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Our website is freeamericaradio.us. Hey, you folks, how you doing? This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce right here for the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast, 16th of October, 2014. Got a lot going on. I'm producing a radio play. I'm putting it together now. There's a, uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of things going into it. So, uh, anyway... That shall be broadcast live on Spreaker.com and also on a website that uh, I have for all those radio plays. And uh, I will tell you, Right now, as soon as I go to the website, uh, you can go to Eastland Radio Theater dot Weebly dot com. Eastland Radio Theater dot Weebly dot com. I plan on uh, producing more radio plays and, of course, your donations there are very much appreciated. And the radio play that I am writing and producing is uh, will be broadcast live on the 28th, 29th, or excuse me, 29th, 30th, and 31st of October. The 29th, the 30th, and 30th of, uh, 31st of October. And it's a, a Halloween special, so it will be it would be to your treat if you want to listen to an old time radio type play. That's what it is. So that would be the twenty ninth, thirtieth, thirty first of October, and it you'll go to Eastland Radio Theater dot Weebly dot com. To uh, listen to that. And I got to tell you, I, 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 really, I really have fun putting that together. Because my background is in theater. My background is in entertainment. My background is, is also in uh, research as far as various religions, various societies, various political ideologies. 
and political systems. But I have a variety of interests. And the one thing that I love doing is, is not only this show and the Views Express Live, but also I like to break free of all that and do some theater. And because I've enjoyed it for so much and for so long, I decided why not put together an old-time radio play like you've heard many years ago um, and uh, give you a treat and entertain you for a bit. So... And uh, that will be the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st of October. And that will be on the Eastland Radio Theater.weebly.com site. So check it out. It will be live on Spreaker. So if you're on Spreaker.com and you go to Eastland Radio Theater, you can jump into the chat room and say, hey, and tell me how you like it, you know. And it's fun, and I love doing it. It's just really, really cool to do. And, and it takes a lot of work, but I love doing it. And it is, uh, it's, uh, it's really cool. Let me make a correction here. You go to Spreaker.com, that's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com, and you go to Eastland Radio Repertory Theater. And there's a lot of uh, public domain stuff there. I've got a few things there from Mercury Theater, you know, Orson Welles, uh, from 1938. I've got A Christmas Carol from 1939. I've got H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds uh, from there as well. And uh, it it, it is is what it is. (laughs) So I don't have too much there, but I will have that there. And you can listen to it live, again, on the 29th, 30th, and 31st of October uh, on EastlandRadioTheater.Weebly.com. And next week I will give you the time that you can tune in to listen to it. So, there you go. If you're a voice actor and would love to be involved with something like that, uh, please email me at Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com, Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com, and uh, send me your audition clips. I'd like to know. Uh, no one gets paid for it. This is just a fun thing to do. So if you want to volunteer your time and your talent, I would appreciate that. Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com, Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. Thank you. So. Onward and upward. Where were we? <laughs> yeah. Um, World Net Daily, WND.com. J- Jerome Corsi writes, CDC denies intro virus link to illegal alien kids. Disease common in Latin America was rare in the U.S. New York, CDC, uh, Jerome Corsi wrote this. New York, the CDC denies a casual link between the surge of illegal alien children from Latin America and the enterovirus D68 outbreak in the United States. But government data shows uh, the virus was rare in the U.S. before this year. Quote, there is no evidence that unaccompanied children brought EVD68 into the United States. We are not aware of any of these children testing positive for the virus, unquote. The CDC emailed WND in response to a request for comment. By the way, the CDC lies. CDC argues EVD-68 is not new to the U.S., having been identified in California in 1962. Quote, in previous years, it has not been as commonly identified as other Enteroviruses, unquote, CDC said, quote, this year's in, uh, increase in confirmed cases is not due to a recent introduction into the United States of America. Did you hear that? This year's increase in confirmed cases is not due to a recent introduction into the United States, unquote. Really? Then what is it? However... Evidence buried in peer-reviewed medical journals provides support for the argument argument 
Enterovirus D68 or EV D68 in the United States was a relatively rare disease. The EV D68 epidemic occurred only after the surge this year of unaccompanied alien children illegally crossing the border from Latin America, a region where the virus is more prevalent among young children. The CDC records nearly 700 people who have been diagnosed with the virus this year. Five children have died while infected. I'll put this up on the uh, Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. The Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page. Check it out. So, the, 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 the question is, right now, seriously, is what the hell are we doing? What are we doing? We need to close the damn border. We just need to tell Mexico and all that, no, we're closing the border, you can piss off. I don't care. We can tell, and the airlines can take it upon themselves to do this, that we're not going to accept any flights coming in from Western uh, Africa. That would be the Gold Coast and stuff like that. Those three countries that have this, quote-unquote, Ebola virus in it, we're not going to accept any planes from there. They've done it before. Why can't they do it again? Other countries have, have done it. We're the only country in the whole world that says, what? No, I'll just bring them on you. No. Other countries said, no, they're not accepting any flights coming in from uh, Western Africa. And guess what? Good for them. I applaud them. We, excuse me, we don't do it. Because, oh, we don't want to look bad in the eyes of other people. Oh, people are sick and you've got the best medical in the world and people need to come there. And uh, No, you need to shut your big damn cake hole. We need to shut the damn borders. We need to tell people, no, we're not accepting any more flights from Western Africa, period. End of sentence, done. Don't like it? I don't give a crap. You people can go away now. You know, I've had it with people who, you know... No, let me be specific. I'm not going to give you a whole, you know, a whole uh, verbal thesis as to, you know, why this and why that. No, let me just tell you straight up. I don't like libtards. Yes, I said that. Oh, by the way, the word retarded is not offensive. It's a scientific term meaning slow. So don't get all, you know, pissed off. The liberals... Quote unquote, the liberals are nothing more than communist, Marxist, fascist, socialist, period, end of sentence. And guess what? 95% of them are Democrat. So I don't want to hear it anymore. You people are full of crap. That's just the way it is. Don't like it? I don't care. I've got the information to prove myself right. Do you? No, you don't. I'm presuming you don't. I'm sure that you're going to grab any type of information that's going to contradict me or contradict the the information I have, and you're probably going to shove it in my face and tell me it's true and it's factual when I know for a fact it's all BS. Okay? So, oh, 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 I'm not going to leave the Republicans out of this either. You guys are doing nothing to stand up for the United States for America. You're not doing anything to tell your counterparts over there on the other side of the aisle, shut your asses down, sit your asses down and shut your big damn pie holes because you don't know what you're talking about. You Republicans don't have a spine and the Democrats don't have balls. So I don't want you guys have been castrated for many, many years and it's time for you to get your asses up and tell your counterparts you sit down and shut up. Because we're going to take care of this country for the people, not for the corporations. But here's a little tidbit of information for you all. The Republicans have been have been bought out by the lobbyists and special interest groups, who are nothing more than the arm of the corporations that own and run Washington, D.C., period. It's not a game played by two different parties 
it's a city state built upon corporate ideologies and funded by corporate elitist money period you don't like what i say stuff it the thing is is that i got the proof to back it up why don't you connect the dots why don't you go track down the numbers huh because you don't want to because you don't want to admit when you're wrong you have no clue whatsoever so those who are backing the democratic i don't even want to call it that anymore since there is no party let me just put it to you this way those who back communist socialist fascist marxist philosophies in the united states can pack your crap and get the hell out. I'm sure China and Russia and North Korea would love your citizenship. Bye. I'll help you pack. I'll hold the door for you. I'll wave at you as you get on the plane. A lot of people have told me recently that uh, how can I do that? How can I say that if you don't like what I say that you can leave? How can I do that? Everybody has free speech. No, they don't. I just read you part of an article where uh, the, the mayor of Houston is saying, I want your sermons, Christians. By the way, it's only Christians that are being chastised by any of the leaders of every state. Have you noticed that? It's not the Muslims. It's not the Jews. It's not anyone else. It's not the Wiccans. It's not the Jehovah Witnesses. It's not the Mormons. It's the Christians. Period. Why? Because they are the most powerful group in the United States of America. And if they had the balls to stand up and to rush Washington, D.C., we wouldn't have this problem now. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Christians. I stood in the courtyard or in the outside the foyer, outside of the building, at Lakeview Assembly in Stockton, California, back in the mid-90s, telling people about what was happening politically in this country and what was going to happen to the churches. They were looking around and wondering if I had been, you know, as, as the old saying goes, I'm being sarcastic, folks, but as the old saying goes, don't forget your tinfoil hat. It was about 95, 96, 97, and I was telling people this. And I got to tell you, they looked at me like I had three eyes, and, and they were about ready to lay hands on me to cast out some demon or something. Well, look at it now. I was right. By the way, churches, you better go independent, because if you belong to the major denominations that are out there, and you sign that 501c3, you've welcomed, you've welcomed the federal government to infiltrate your current church and to spread the propaganda of, oh, when the FEMA camps open up, just go. And just, just, let's do, no, 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 no. Our founders believed in God. Our founders stood on the principles by which the Bible had set forth in their lives. They understood what was right for them. They understood that in a generation after generation after generation, they were going to have to be able to lay down some principles for the sake of the freedom of the people and the liberty of the United States for America. Go look it up. United States for America. But some jackass came along and started buying up politicians. Started buying up certain things. And started getting groups of people together to push an agenda. And they did. 15 years after the War of Independence, we get a constitution for the United States of America with a Bill of Rights 
with ten amendments. And then in 1871, we have this thing called the Act of 1871, the Organic Act of 1871, which pretty much incorporates Washington, D.C., a little 10-square-mile area of land, And the rest of the states are nothing more than subdivisions of that one company or business. And the Constitution was changed from the Constitution for the United States of America to the Constitution of the United States of America. You can go look it up. You know... USA Incorporated, there's a bunch of books written about this, and yes, they're all true. But your libtards out there, the, you, 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 you fascist, Marxist, socialist, communists, don't want anybody to see that, so you're trying everything uh, to do, you're trying everything to suppress the freedom of speech. That's not true, Wayne. Yeah, it is. Have you walked around your town and saw signs that said free speech area? Have you walked around your town and tried to uh, hand out flyers for positive things or, or protests or, or any, any number of those things? Have you tried? You were shut down almost immediately. Why? Marxist, socialist, communist, fascist, ordinances created by your city council, county board of supervisors, and your state government who are funded by those folks in Washington, D.C., who are being lobbied. Well, there's lobbyists and special interest groups that don't want you to have freedom of speech, specifically Christians. And I've heard people say that if Christians are being, you know, persecuted, and if Christians are being told they can't do this and they can't wear a, a shirt with a flag on it and they can't, wear, they can't read their Bible in school or whatever. If Christians are being told this and being persecuted for what they believe, then you better turn around and persecute the Mormons, persecute the uh, Muslims, persecute the Jewish synagogues, persecute the Buddhists, persecute the Wiccans. You better turn around and do that or allow every single religion to do whatever they want except for extremists which take parts of their own religion and use it to kill people now i don't pull any punches and i don't i don't see any reason why but i want to tell you something you're going to get the full force of my knowledge about these things that are going on. You're going to get my opinion, or you're going to get my speculation, you're going to get my theories, you're going to, you get, you're going to get it all. Do I know it all? Oh, hell no, I don't know it all. I'd be bored because there wouldn't be anything else to learn. I'm not going to give you the silver uh, platter answer to every question that you have. You better activate your brain and go look it up people can call me anything they want <laughs> they can walk out the door and have a nice day because i know who i am so i don't cater to anybody else's belief or anybody else's model on what i should be or what they think i should be If anything, if anything, maybe, maybe I'm right when I say that if people don't like what I say, they can go away and have a nice day. Maybe I'm right when I say that people who are Marxist, fascist, socialist, communist need to pack their crap and go to Russia, China, or North Korea. Maybe I'm right that maybe these people that are like that 
should find an island somewhere, pass the hat, get a lot of money, go buy the island, and go be whoever they want. Or find a hole in the wall in the United States somewhere in some vast openness of land and just live there. Because nobody likes you. Okay? Now, somebody once told me that I don't like it when people disagree with me. No, I love it when people disagree with me. I hate it when they don't have, <laughs> when they don't have enough evidence to back up what they're saying. Okay? This is why I say prove yourself right. Hardly anybody I know wants to do that. Do you know why? This is very simple. Very simple. They don't want to admit when they're wrong. It's just that easy. It's that simple. They're not going to come to me with any type of information to prove themselves right because they don't want to admit when they're wrong. That's it. And as far as I'm concerned... I'll sit down with somebody who disagree, disagrees with me. I'll, I'll listen to what they have to say. I'll listen. If they don't have the evidence in front of them to show me why they disagree with me, I'm not going to spend two seconds in the same room with them. And I'm sure you're the same way. My listeners, whoever is listening to this, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and even if you disagree with me, please email me. Free America Radio at USA.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. You can go to the Wayne S. Pierce Show. Weebly.com for more information. If you like the show, you like the show. Thank you. Pass it around. Let people know about it. If you don't like the show, email me and let me know. <laughs> you know? So. Anyway, come Monday, the Views Express Live and the Wayne S. Pierce Show. Uh, the Wayne S. Pierce Show may be back live, depending on what I'm doing, but definitely on Monday, the Views Express Live will be live right here on the internet, worldwide, for your enjoyment, at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Right there on a Free America Radio Network, freeamericaradio.us. The Wayne S. Pierce Show might be live. Just keep paying attention to Facebook. I usually put it up there. And uh, lots of things going on, lots of things to be said. I've had to take a week off due, some, due to some family issues. And uh, it's always good to, you know, step back, relax, take a look at what you're doing, re-examine, and basically reset. Regroup and reset and go from there. And it's, uh, it's, it's really cathartic. It's really, it's a relief just to step back for a few and just take a look at everything and re-examine a lot. The Free America Radio Network is... Uh, Scaling back just a bit, we're still going to give you the truth with the facts. Tear away the veil to show you who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. We're still going to do that. But we're moving on to the next level. So whatever you can do to contribute to Free America Radio Network, please do. I know times are tough, so I completely understand that. I do take donations, PayPal, Bitcoin. You can advertise. Go to freeamericaradio.us. Go to the sponsors page. I'm not going to break your advertising budget. I took that into consideration. And if you want to get your emergency food supply today, you can. You'll be helping out your family and Free America Radio Network all at the same time. So please do what you can to help Free America Radio Network get to the next level. And folks, until next time, you guys rock. So keep, keep freedom in your sight. And that's and use that's just something I want you to understand. Keep freedom in your sight because that's what's gonna help. Have a great day, have a great Thursday. I will talk to you Monday on the Views Express Live, four PM Pacific, seven PM Eastern, right here on the Free America Radio Network.